Thank you very much for having me. I'll just give a brief introduction about myself. I'm an electrical engineer and being in power, power industry for uh, 17 years now. I'm working for WSP. It's a big consultancy. I'm based in Serbia. I used to be in UK and now I'm um, uh, leading the, the Serbia office. And I have a team of around 27 people working for, uh, for me in, in, in Belgrade. So what I'll try to, to do is to share a few things. We work in, in many uh, locations that are outside Serbia. We work in Europe, but we work quite a lot in Middle East and in, in Africa. And we also work, we have quite a lot of projects in uh, Caribbean. So this is one of, the, one of the examples. This was the project that uh, we are currently, well, actually, we're just finishing the project. And it's about the integration of solar resources in Senegal, which we are doing for the, for the World Bank and the IFC and working together with the utility in, in, in Senegal. So as you can see, uh, the Senegal is based in, in, in West Africa, and it's a part of West uh, African power pool. There is South African and East, uh, East African power pool. And as you can see, uh, there are a lot of interconnection projects currently uh, currently uh, under construction or planned, which will actually have an effect that you'll have a strong interconnection between the countries in, 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 in West Africa. However, currently, because these, um, these projects are all under construction or planned, Senegal currently has only uh, interconnection to Mauritania and it has a uh, connection to, uh, to, to Guinea. So they, they don't have quite big support from, uh, from, from other systems. And uh, what, what is planned for next year? Why, why, did we be, why have we been asked to do this um, study? Because they have about 200 megawatts of PV coming in and 100 megawatts, 150 megawatts of wind power. And there is also, uh, there is also a construction of the coal power plant, which is 150 megawatts. And it's a game changer because their, their, highest, their largest unit now is uh, about 20 megawatts. So they're going from 20 to 115, and which, is, which is quite challenging for, for the system. System is mainly uh, uh, heavy fuel oil, diesel, diesel plants, and they have uh, hydros which are actually located in, um, in Guinea, but which they are uh, co-using and co-sharing. So mainly mix currently is diesel and hydro. And now you'll have quite a lot of wind and solar and, and coal, which will be as a, as a base load. So what, what was challenging for us? Our, our task was to actually look at two aspects. One aspect was the grid itself. So we did quite a lot of uh, PSSC studies. But we also had to come with the, uh, with the economical dispatch in uh, in Plexus to understand what kind of uh, how we can how we can run all of the generation in an optimum way and also to uh, see what kind of impact it will have on the overall cost cost of electricity. So uh, we what we started we started basically with uh, uh, Plexus and PSSC in, in in parallel. So we we modeled the complete transmission network in in in, in Plexus. We imported it from. Uh, from PSSC, uh, we have then modeled obviously all the all the all the generation fleet, and we had to increase we had to increase the the reserve. And what was challenging was actually uh, for for the system because the, they 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 couldn't get any support from other from other countries. So basically, that uh, Senegal would 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 they we wanted to test if they can have. The, the whole reserve requirement uh, provided by themselves. Uh, obviously, what, what is also a common problem with renewable integration, that your inertia in your system will fall because you'll have quite a lot of uh, renewable generation that, uh, that you'll run. So these were, these were the, 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 main, the main challenges. And uh, we were looking at basically a short-term period until 2022 because in 2023, the two major interconnection projects will actually uh, finish. And that will actually then bring uh, Senegal uh, to um, stronger integration with, uh, with the rest of uh, West, African, uh, West African power pool. 
so the solution, what, what we found in, in PSSC, we found that, that, that the system doesn't have a sufficient level of reserve. So we were studying the outage of the largest, of, of the largest unit. And there wasn't enough reserve in the, in the system because most of the power plants are run between 90 and 100 percent, so there is not sufficient level of, uh, of reserve. So they were thinking, and that is according to PPA, so they were thinking one solution was actually to try to change the PPAs, which we all know that it's not easy or can be uh, very expensive, to basically change how the, how the power plant producers uh, produce electricity. And the second thing that we were actually looking was to see how feasible it would be to, uh, to include some uh, batteries, battery storage. So what we did first in PSSC, we modeled, uh, we modeled battery storage. And, uh, it, and it turned out that it, it was sufficient to, prefer, to provide this referral. OK, I'm not reading all of these things. But basically, this is just giving you uh, what, what are we talking about. We were talking about, I don't know how many thousand gigawatts. And what we are faced in many, <laughs> in many of our studies is, is very small systems, which are only a few hundred, few hundred megawatts, and with minimum demand going only to a couple of uh, hundreds of, of megawatts. So we were basically looking at all the data uh, that we can get from the control center. So we, we actually came up with uh, two or three years. We got uh, each day uh, hourly profiles. So this was all built into, uh, into Plexus. And because we had to use both Plexus and PSSC, we had to study characteristic days in, in, in PSSC to take into account the, the, worst, the worst conditions. So we basically had peak and non-peak demand, and also we were looking at the the, the minimum, basically the, the day the day in a year where you have minimum load at 13 hours when the sun is uh, shining the, the most, because that will give you the 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 maximum uh, the maximum uh, proportion of, uh, of of solar PV and the 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 lowest proportion of. Um, of synchronous uh, generators. So, because we are looking at these three years, so this is basically showing you generation mix. So we have 123, and, and as you can see, this is increasing for 60 megawatts, and uh, also wind is increasing from 51 to uh, 158. This, uh, this here is uh, coal, 100 and 125. And, uh, you can see that uh, heavy fuel oil basically <coughs> will will stay the same, and and hydro is basically new projects that will be that will be uh, that are currently introduced. So this is what we have actually added into the Plexus database. I think we we, we modeled uh, plants into qu quite high level of details, and also the the transmission tr the transmission network, and. This is uh, what I was explaining previously that we wanted uh, actually to have um, to have Senegal be able to. Uh, these are the requirements that they will have after the interconnection with the West African Power Pool. But we actually were modeling this as scenario one and as scenario two. We will we wanted to see if if the whole spinning reserve of 150 megawatt, which is the size of the coal power plant, can be actually. Uh, provided by, by Senelec itself. So we did the uh, annual calculations with and without solar power plants to see what kind of impact economic it will have on the, on the system. We also looked at uh, batteries. So <coughs> basically for the reserve requirements, we found out that the batteries could be about 50, <coughs> 50 megawatts with a 50 megawatt hour capacity. And then we did some sensitivity cases, uh, which is probably standard for all of you who uh, model these things, is that some, some of these projects can, can be delayed. And usually, all of the projects are a bit delayed because people are usually optimistic. So we did a uh, few sensitivities if certain projects are not commissioned when they were supposed to. And uh, so this is just an example of resulting dispatch profiles. So this is actually. <coughs> Without 60, without uh, the the PV and with PV, so it's uh, just showing the increase of uh, of solar generation in a 
in a daily profile. And uh, well, what, what were the conclusions is that uh, there isn't sufficient level of, uh, of spinning reserve, even if we relaxed the, the requirements for the, for the diesel units to be able to operate, say, from 50% to 100% of, uh, of their uh, load. And so we looked at, uh, at, at the battery as a, as a solution to resolve <coughs> the reserve uh, shortage. Then we went to PSSC to study uh, this uh, battery. So we did the disturbance. So we are looking also at locations. But location-wise, it didn't make big difference because it's not such a huge system. The losses were, were basically similar. And there aren't any other huge differences between the location for battery. It's more to, it more comes to the practical things. Can you add this battery to the substation or not? Do you have enough land and space? So, uh, so we went then to PSSC. And by doing PSSC, uh, PSSC uh, we did obviously more studies than this. This is just looking at the largest outage, but we also did three-phase fault and single-phase fault and also rejection of, uh, of load. So we found out that actually their commanded battery capacity had to be increased to 60 megawatts to, uh, to actually for, uh, in, in one of the years, in 2020 and 2022. So uh, we basically then went, went back to Plexus and uh, did the, the calculation with 60 megawatt of, uh, of battery. We also uh, were looking at, in terms of the duration, it had to be at least uh, at least half an hour. Looking at uh, the uh, dispatch uh, and the battery optimization, it was mainly used for reserve provision because of the, the situation that, uh, that Senegal had. So it was basically ju just used uh, for, re uh, for reserve with a bit of charging and discharging during, during day to avoid uh, PV curtailment. And I think this is actually a good uh, this is actually uh, one of the things that, uh, that we like about Plexus is this uh, feature that you can actually uh, uh, import the, the network from PSSC and then export it because we use uh, PSSC uh, quite often. What, what we also notice in terms of batteries that uh, what was one of my questions that they could be actually maybe more comprehensive in terms of better understanding how it when, when it does in Plexus, how it actually caters for um, spinning reserve up and down, because that would mean that, uh, that, the, that the status of uh, charge of battery should be more or less always on 50% to be able to provide up and down reserve. So th these are things that could be interesting. Then also when defining energy of, of battery, you know, how, how does it actually uh, takes into account the charging and, and discharging and, and provision of uh, or provision of reserve. So, okay, thank you. So, if you have any questions, please.